Joining us right now is Mohamed El Arian. He is the chief economic advisor at Allianz. He's also president of Queen's College, Cambridge. And Mohamed, earnings uh, a lot kind of riding on this, especially when you mentioned some of those big tech names. They're responsible for the bulk of the gains that we've seen in the market this year overall for the indexes. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to figure out three things from these earnings. One on tech, how advanced is that cost cutting and how impactful will that be? Two, Coca-Cola was fascinating for me. It shows you that pricing power really matters, especially when you have a strong brand and a big market share. And then thirdly, as, as Joe and, and Dom were, were exchanging earlier, it's amazing that we're, gonna, we're talking about First Republic, but that's a really important one to look at. So, you know, it's a very varied picture, but one that reflects the amount of uncertainty that's out there. Where, where do you come down? I mean, the economy is looking really good. We're going to get GDP this week, and that's expected to be really strong. But as you mentioned, you still have questions about what's happening around finance, uh, the finance sector. Uh, First Republic Bank, what are you looking for in those results, and what will that tell you more broadly about the industry, if anything? So really what we're looking for is, have they stabilized deposits? And as important, what's happening to funding costs and what's happening to loan loss provisions? Those three elements are going to be repeated over the next few months. This thing is going to play out over many quarters. It's not going to play out immediately. And all that matters because we, we need to get a feel for how much credit extension is going to come down. We know it's going to come down, but we don't know by how much. Um, that's a big question mark. The second big question mark is how sticky is inflation and how will the Fed balance the trilemma? Reduce inflation, minimize the damage to jobs and growth, and maintain financial stability. So we're going to get more information on this going forward. And of course, that's the geopolitics. So that is unusually uncertain. I want to stress that. That's why the market is fair here. Given what we know and we don't know, this, these levels seem fair. These, these levels seem fair? Yes, I said it to you last week and the week before. You know, we'll get a lot more information, but given what we know and especially what we don't know, I wouldn't bet against these markets. I wouldn't bet in favor of these markets. I would actually just wait and see. We're going to have to figure out um, these, three, these three main issues I, I mentioned. But do you think that, that the potential for bad news, at least some bad news, has been baked in? I, I, we were speaking earlier today um, with someone who was pointing out that when companies miss earnings are down, or the stock miss earnings expectations, stocks are down, but not by as much as possible as, as usual. When they beat expectations, they're up by more, and maybe that's just the the indication that there's already a negative bias built into these markets. Yeah, I and mean, I think that's right. If you look at the equity market on a standalone, it is the bond market that is um, confusing right now. We are seeing things we have not seen ever or for a long time. I'll give you two examples. Three months spread relative to one month at levels we haven't seen, ast astronomical levels. Um, the f the, ten the five year CDS, credit the full swap, is back over 50 basis points. We haven't seen that in the last 10 years. Um, so the equity market actually is, is calming, is comforting. It is the bond market that's sending all these conflicting signals. I myself can't make, make what to think of what's going on in these parts of the bond market that we're not used to look at. And that makes you want to do what with investments at this point? It just reflects, I think the, the bond market recognizes and has embraced that there's a lot of uncertainty and that you've got to factor that in. The equity market is talking less uncertainty um, and I just worry that you don't want to commit fully to this equity market until you figure out the things that we don't know. Because you and think the bond market knows more they're than the... Play out. You think the I bond... I don't know how they're going to play out. It's really uncertain right now. But you think, in general, the bond market tends to know more than the equity market? It tends to be more macro-focused. Um, look at what's happening about expectations for the Fed. You know, it used to be easy. The Fed told us they're going to have one more hike and stay there. That was the baseline. And the balance of doubt was they're going to have to cut a lot. Now, suddenly, we're seeing also the other tail starting to go up, that maybe they're going to have to hike more. There's now an over 20% probability that they may hike, have to hike one more time after May. 
So you see in the bond market all these signals that tell you there's a lot of uncertainty out there on the economy and on policy.